I want to show you how to make an extruded form. So I'm going to go to the family new conceptual mass, choose the mass template, open it up. A little bit different from before, I'm in a 3D view. Um, how this is different is that normally levels didn't display in 3D. You'll see that now from the home tab I can actually draw in uh, additional levels if I want, if they're going to be useful to me in creating my mass model. So I just place that level so it's 120 feet high. Now I'm going to draft and I can always see on my uh, options bar where I'm drafting in the, in the project. I'm going to make sure it says level 1. And what I'm doing is eyeballing in a rectangular shape that's more or less centered on uh, where the, the two planes cross, hitting the escape key to get out. I can give this precise dimensions if I want by double clicking on uh, the line and then editing the temporary dimension. Let's say I want that to be 150 and I want the long dimension to be um, 200. So just to make it a little clearer how the extrude works, or the extrusion works, which is implied from the geometry that you select, I'm going to put in a couple of filleted arcs here. So if I pick my two edges in place, pick, pick, place, and then I double click on the arc to actually change the value, and I'll set that to say 25 feet, and then click on the screen, or click the arc, click the temporary dimension, type in the value that you want, 25, and then I could actually hit the escape key, if I want another way of finishing the command. But now I've got a closed profile for the bottom of my, my form. I select the form, and I go to create form solid, and it looks like it did an extrusion, right? It looks like it took the that form and kind of pushed it through a template to give me more of the same as it were but in, in solid form. Um, I've got my old options of being able to drag this up on the z-axis or of being able to edit the temporary dimension to say you know what height I want it to be 150 feet. What's new is the option where I can say align and I can pick on the, the level and then align the top of my model with it. You see this indicated alignment with the, the dashed green line and if I want to fix that I could actually padlock it, lock it. <clears throat> so now if I were to uh, select and change that value say to 100 you'll see that I can drive it down and actually make it make it a parametric uh, building form. Now what, what I want to point out here is that that would seem to make a whole lot of sense as an extrusion because you know that's the command and how it's what it's called but uh, it's actually really more of a blend between two different sketches and I can show this if I if I tab on the bottom of my form so I'm going to the end line and tabbing until I see the bottom surface and then clicking and then I'm going to say edit the profile and what I'm going to do is remove this edge and draw a circle in its place. So I'm, I'm going to add, sorry, an arc in its place. So I'm drawing that arc just so that it fits the space that was that was left. Um, so now what I've really got is a is a closed profile on the bottom, but the a copy of the original on the top. And so when I say that I'm finished with editing, that's the form that I get. And I can kind of drive that point home by picking on the top surface and saying edit the profile up here. And what I'm going to do is just move that back by you know, arbitrary distance just to show you that I can edit and change the sketch on the bottom or on the top. So where does the idea of the extrusion come from? It's, it's actually that there is an option uh, for this command that if I, uh, if I tab to my form, again pick it, actually I'll tab to the, to the bottom surface under form element here, if I say lock the profiles, that's me saying that they should both be the same. That the sketch on the bottom that's currently what I've got as active is to be the same as the one at the top. Oops, not what I wanted to see. Let me just try that again. Tab, tab, select, form element, lock. You see what happens is that the 
sketch on the bottom is now really an extrusion because the one on the top is locked to the one on the bottom and if I was to change the one on the bottom it's going to change the one on the top so let me just show you that if I go in and say edit that profile and I drag this out a little bit and I say I'm finished you see that there is a they're locked together they are the same profile and it's indicated by the padlock symbol so if I unlock them again you would see that I could actually pick on the top surface go and make a change I'm going to take the arc out and put in a line again and then finish editing and then back to where I was before which was that I've got two sketches now the significance of this is really in the behavior of the of the part um, I'm gonna I'm gonna unlock the connection that there was between the level and the top surface there because I want you to see that how this behaves is that when they're not locked if I were to do something like grab an edge and move it up you see that it doesn't affect the the profile that's on the bottom of the model but if they were locked so I'm gonna I'm gonna tab through unlock the model if if they were locked then when I try and grab that edge and move it up you see what happens at the bottom is that it's actually lifting the edge of the other profile that it's locked to so the way the way that it behaves when you try and make these kind of push pull operations changes depending on on whether or not the actual two sketches are locked together I'm going to control Z back until I get to that point and and finish with that uh, explanation of the extrusion and the significance of the lock profiles